Section 2.5 Matrix Factorizations A factorization of a matrix A is an equation that expresses A as a product of two or more matrices. Matrix multiplication, on the other hand, is, involves a synthesis of data where we're combining the effects of two or more transformations onto a single matrix. Um, the matrix factorization is an analysis of data. And basically, if we were thinking about computer science, the expression of A as a product of two things amounts as a preprocessing of the data in A. So we're organizing it into two or more parts that where the structures are more useful. So that's kind of why we're going to look at this. And one factorization that we're going to look at is the LU factorization. The LU factorization is motivated by the common industrial and business problem of solving a sequence of equations all with the same coefficient matrix. And we kind of see those here. When A, our matrix, is invertible, one could compute A inverse and then compute A inverse times the vector B1 and then A inverse times the vector B2 and so on. It is more efficient to solve the first equation above by row reduction and obtain an LU factorization of A at the same time. Then the remaining equations are solved with that factorization. Let's assume that A is an M by N matrix that can be row reduced to echelon form without row interchanges. So all we, the only row reduction we would be doing would be scaling and then multiplying a row and adding it to another. But we would not actually be interchanging any rows for this specific one. Then the matrix A can be written in this format where A equals L times U where we have our matrix L is an M by M lower triangular matrix. So we see we have entries that are not necessarily all zero in the lower triangle and zeros in the upper triangle with ones on the diagonal. And then U is an M by N echelon form of A. Not necessarily the reduced echelon form, but an echelon form of A. So you see here that we've got pivot positions and zeros below them. So then our matrix L is invertible since it's square and is called a unit lower triangular matrix. When A equals L times U, the equation AX equal B can be written as L times UX equal B. And then if I replace UX with Y, then we can find x by solving this pair of equations here. L times y equals b, and u times x equals y. Now, we're, you're going to want to remember these two, two equations because you have to use those in order to solve using the LU factorization. And we'll look at some examples, but the easiest way to remember them is think of it as two equations, as two girls, named Lib and Uxie. I don't know if that'll help, but hopefully that'll be a nice way to help you remember the two equations, Lib and Uxie. So first you solve Ly equal B for Y, and then you solve Ux equal Y for X. So here is a picture of what we're talking about. Normally we take our vector X, multiply it by the matrix A and produce our vector B. But with the LU factorization we're taking X, multiplying it by U to produce Y. Then we multiply that by L to produce B. So you'll notice when we're solving and going backwards to find X, we're, we're undoing this essentially and we're solving for Y first and then solving for X. And this factorization, this is a factorization of the mapping from X to AX. So let's look at this example. It can be verified that this matrix A here can be factored into this LU factorization given here. So here I've given you L and here I've given you U. 
And you'll have examples like this on your homework where you're already given the factorization for L and U. So we want to use this factorization of A to solve our equation AX equal B where B is this given column vector here. So to do this, first we're going to solve LY equal B and we're going to solve that for Y. So that's kind of our first step. And then the second step, I'm going to solve UX equal Y using the Y vector I found from up above and I want to solve it for X then. So I'm going to set up an augmented matrix with L and B, which we have here. Notice that this first part here is my matrix L from above and then this here is my vector B that we had here. And what we want to do is we want to row reduce this in order to produce the identity matrix and then our solution vector will be the last column. So we'll get this matrix here and what we've done is we've solved this and gotten the identity and then our vector Y. So this is now Y. And now my second step is to write my augmented matrix with U and then the vector Y that we just found. So we see that here where this first part is my matrix U from up above here and this is the Y vector that we found in the first step. So again we're going to row reduce this and we want to get the identity on the left. So we've row reduced this down to where we got the identity and now we've found our solution vector, vector x. And so this is my solution. So I have then that the vector x is equal to the vector 3, 4, negative 6, and negative 1. It would be worthwhile to go ahead and verify that we can solve this the same way as we're used to, AX equal B, setting up an augmented matrix where you have A and then B. So this would be the matrix A from up above here and then the last column would be the B vector and then row reduce it and see if you get the same solution and you should. So in this example we've used the given LU factorization to solve my equation AX equal B. But the next question you should ask yourself is what do I do if I don't have the LU factorization? How do I find it? So that's what we're going to look at next. And we have an algorithm for finding the LU factorization of our matrix A. First, we want to reduce A to an echelon form U by a sequence of row replacement operations if possible. And remember that we're not doing row interchanges. And then number two, we want to place entries in L such that the same sequence of row operations reduces L to the identity. So we're going to look at some examples of this algorithm to, to make it a little clearer. First, we're going to start with a small 2 by 2 matrix. This is our matrix A and we want to find the LU factorization. So what we're going to do is simply row reduce this to an echelon form. So what I want to do is I want to get a zero here in this bottom left hand corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 3 halves and add. And when I do that then I'll still have 2, 5, that will give me a 0 here and 7 halves here. So my first pivot was the 2 and it's important to take note of that. What I'm going to do is use this to begin to form my matrix L. So this was my first column that we started with, 2, negative 3. And then our second pivot is here and I have seven halves. So this matrix is my matrix U. So I've found U and we want to find L. So what we do is we look at how can I get ones now on my diagonal. 
Remember that L had ones on the diagonal, zeros up above, and numbers down below that were not necessarily zero. So to make this pivot a one, we would divide by two. If I divide by two, then I'll get that my matrix L, this first row is then one and negative three halves, because I divide each entry by two. And now I want to divide in the second column by seven halves, and so I'll have zero up above and a one here which gives me my ones on the diagonal. So we've now found L U. And let's just verify if I multiply L times U. So here was L and here was U. I should produce my original matrix, which was A. So I've got one times two plus zero gives me two. Then I've got one times five plus zero times seven halves gives me five. So my first row is identical to the original matrix. Now for the second one, I'll multiply negative three halves by two gives me a negative three plus one times zero. So I have negative three. And then I'll multiply negative three halves times five gives me negative fifteen halves plus one times seven halves. So seven halves. So I have negative fifteen halves plus seven halves is negative eight halves, which is negative four. So I have produced then my original matrix A, so that was a good check. So here is how we found L and U. Let's look at a larger example to continue working and make this more clear. So let's look at this example. This is a three by three matrix. And so first thing I'm going to do is identify my first pivot. What I want to do is multiply it by one and add it to the second row. And then I will multiply by a negative three and add it to the third row. And we'll get this matrix here. The next step, I'm going to identify my next pivot, which is here in the middle. I have a negative three and I'll multiply by a negative two-thirds here and add it to my third row. So I'll get a zero below. And we'll get this matrix here and I'll identify then my last pivot which here is a negative eight. So this matrix is my matrix U. It is an echelon form of A. Now let's look at each column where I have my square boxes. So I've got my first column here, three, negative three, and nine. Then my next one, I have negative three, negative two. Then my last one, I have a negative eight. So we're doing this in an effort to find L. And what I want to do is I want to look at the pivots and turn those into ones. So here, to make that a one, I would divide by three. And so I would then get that L is the matrix made up of that column first. So I'd have one, negative one, three. Then I'll have a zero, and the next one I will divide by a negative three. So then I'll have one, and then positive two-thirds. Then I have two zeros, and then I'll divide by a negative eight to give me a one here in the last position. So this is then my matrix L. And you can multiply L times U to verify that we get our original matrix. It's a good check. Now you try. I want you to find the LU factorization of this larger matrix. You'll notice that this matrix is not square. So we're not going to have a pivot in every column when you row reduce it down to get your matrix U. And, but when you do find the LU factorization, you will only use the pivot columns. So L will still be square because you will still have four pivots. So L should be a four by four matrix. U will not. U will be the same size. It'll be a four by five. So give this a try and we'll talk about it in class.